Good afternoon and welcome to the Sonoma County Career Fest Healthcare Panel Discussion. My name is Rachel Kobe and I am the school counselor at Tamales High School and I will be moderating this panel. Um, during this panel, we'll be welcoming our three professionals from the healthcare field to share their experiences and their careers. Um, I'll let them in introduce themselves in just a few minutes. Um, but to the students here live with us, we have, um, we have the chat disabled, but we have opened the Q&A function, um, and we encourage you to ask questions throughout the panel. Um, we also have Nicole Kinsella here, the college and career counselor at Piner High School, and she's monitoring the Q&A, um, and we'll have some time at the end of the session to answer the student questions live. Um, and if you have a question for a specific panelist, please specify that in your question so that we can direct it to the right person. And you guys also have the ability to um, upvote a question. So if you're maybe not comfortable asking a question, you can always upvote something that you see in the chat that maybe you're wanting to ask as well. Um, all right, so let's get started. Panelists, I welcome you to introduce yourself and to provide us with a brief overview of what you do in your career and the educational path you took to get where you are now. Um, how about we start with you, Jenny? Hi everyone, my name is Jenny Tran. Um, I'm a registered nurse over at Stanford Healthcare within the hematology unit. So a little brief overview of what that is. It's just like um, a unit that cares for patients who have blood cancers like leukemia and other bloodborne diseases like sickle cell and all the other kinds of bloodborne diseases. For schooling, um, I started my schooling after high school at San Jose Junior College, which was really nice. It was nice because I was able to finish my prerequisites, general education, and I was interested in studying Spanish, so I did that there. And then for nursing school, I transferred to Dominican University over in San Rafael, and I graduated last May of 2020 and recently started working at Stanford in October. Thank you. I'll have uh, Dr. Shundi go next. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> my name is Dr. Urmila Shende, and I'm a practicing pediatrician. I've been in Sonoma County practicing peds, pediatrics for 23 years now. And for the last six months, I've been uh, helping to lead the vaccine effort in Sonoma County for the County of Sonoma Department of Health. Um, and it's been very exciting. Every minute, the last 23 years has been very exciting. There's never a dull moment um, in medicine and in taking care of children, and particularly with the vaccine effort um, that's underway right now. Um, to get to this point, I uh, completed high school, then did four years of college out east at Cornell University, and then four years of medical school at Northwestern University in Chicago, and then three years of residency in pediatrics in Los Angeles um, before coming here in 1998 to settle down and, uh, and begin my, my career. And it's been a very rewarding journey, and I thank you for allowing us all to be here today so that we can help answer your questions. Thank you. And Samuel, what about you? Sure. Um, so my name is Samuel Bernier. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist or a psychotherapist or a counselor. Um, these are all different names that we go by. Um, I've, been, I've been working with people for about a decade. Um, and the way I got here was um, I, my first career was actually in engineering. I um, worked as an engineer for about 10 years after junior college and four year school and the, and the like. Um, but, but throughout that time, I really, I felt like my truer passion or my deeper passion was with working with people and helping people through tough times. And so uh, about five years ago, I transitioned to um, doing into this career path. And um, yeah, that required a master's degree in um, counseling psychology um, and then to a three-year internship. So that's what brought me here. And I, I really love what I do. I love um, being of service to people and just help, helping people to think through and feel through and work through their challenges. Thank you. All right, so um, Dr. Shunde, I'll start with you this time. What, start, uh, what sparked your interest in being a pediatrician and what do you love most about what you do? 
Well, I think what uh, started my interest in it is that I've always enjoyed kids. You can't be a pediatrician if you don't enjoy children. So I've, I've always enjoyed working with children. And I think it was my passion for learning. Um, from the beginning, when I was in school and high school, um, yes, there were some classes that I enjoyed more than others, but I've really had a passion for learning. And I think that's important, no matter what field you go into, to find something that really sparks your interest, sparks joy, um, sparks you to want to continue learning. Um, so that was the, the big issue for me. And then, of course, um, as, as Sam said, um, trying to help others and making a difference in people's lives. And in pediatrics, that means uh, helping not only children feel comfortable and learning about what is possibly wrong with them or what are healthier ways to live, but also especially to help educate their parents. Um, believe it or not, all of your parents at one point really didn't know what they were doing and, uh, and being able to help educate and, and guide people through that. Um, is, is something that really appealed to me and to be able to explain things, medical, complex medical things in a simple way so that people understand. Um, and at this point, it's also the ability to pivot constantly, uh, to be able to constantly be changing and to be flexible and to be able to learn different things. And that particularly has been true with the, the COVID epidemic that we've all been faced with and with the vaccine effort. Um, so there's never a dull moment. It's been very stimulating for the brain and I, I truly enjoy what I'm doing. And currently there's light at the end of the dark, dark tunnel because we're all coming out of this and uh, it's very exciting. So helping to restore health and healing to people in general and especially to our community. Thank you. Ginny, same for you. What, what do you feel like sparked your interest in this career and what do you love about your job? Um, well, ever since I was a little girl, I, my mom was a caretaker for my grandmother. And so I've always kind of had that, um, a person who is always taking care of someone. And that's something I've kind of always been interested. I have a lot of family, a lot of different cousins and all that kind of stuff. So I've always been put in the role of a caretaker, but kind of to go beyond that, I knew that I wanted to have some, like a career that was like mentally stimulating as Dr. Cindy was saying, but, um, just like particularly now that I work in a cancer unit, I think a lot of people view that that can be kind of a sad and scary time. But I think knowing that I am able to provide care for someone in this like intense time for their loved ones and for the patients themselves, I think that like gives me a lot of peace of mind. But um, it's been such a great journey. I feel like throughout nursing school, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And then I found my passion in cancer and I've been really enjoying it, learning everything as I've gone through this new job. Great, thank you. And Samuel, um, same goes for you. And how did you end up more in, a, in the mental health field versus kind of the traditional healthcare pathway? Yeah, so for me, it was, yeah, being, being curious about the way I suffered like feeling how like certain thinking, certain patterns that I experienced in school and after school in relationships in my family life, there was just a lot of confusion and a lot of suffering and um, not wanting to suffer and not wanting to cause suffering to the people around me who had to have to deal with me. And so really wanting to, to learn more about how, how to be a better human being and how to, how to, yeah, how to bring happiness, more happiness into the world. That's, those were the drivers for, for getting into this field for me. Thank you. Um, and turning it back to the students real quick, I just wanna remind you that you can ask questions in the Q&A feature. If you didn't catch that when you first came in, the chat is disabled, but feel free to ask some questions in the Q&A. We will have time to answer them at the end. Um, all right, so thinking back on how you got to where you all are today, um, what skills did you rely on and currently use in your work and kind of when and how did you start developing those kind of career skills that you need to be successful in your profession? Um, and Samuel, would you like to start on that one? I'd love to, yeah. Um, Let's see, it's an interesting question. Um, I, to be honest, I think, uh, <laughs> so I, I, I was in an engineering school um, and it was very stressful. And, um, and so I was like, what am I gonna do to deal with all of this stress? And I, I found mindfulness and meditation. 
and um, and that that really helped me a lot to work with my own stress, my own level of distress. Um, and I feel like now in my current work, working with people who are distressed, being able to listen and really take someone in, being a without immediately going for solutions, without e immediately going for fixing. Um, really serves me very well. Being able to be with distress and being with difficulty without, without getting overactive too quickly. And really creating a space for someone to, to be, be themselves how they are. Um, that, I think that, that training has been most fundamentally helpful for the work I currently do. And Jenny, how does that differ for you maybe as a nurse and what kind of career skills do you rely on on a daily basis? Um, I feel like something that has made it a lot easier for speaking with patients is just, I studied Spanish while I was at the junior college. And I feel like, like in high school, you have a lot of um, extracurricular activities and just um, your electives and all that kind of jazz. But having a language during school is extremely important. I feel like it's made life a lot easier in terms of communicating with patients because it can be very scary being in the hospital, like just in itself. But with if you have a language barrier, it's a hundred times more scary. So I think that is something that I really harbored while I was at the junior college. And I'm really appreciative of that fact because I'm able to use that on a regular basis with all of my different patients. But also kind of like in terms of mindfulness, um, that are because having a career within nursing and especially within the cancer unit can be really, um, really daunting and really, if you don't have like time for yourself, it can be really difficult in terms of process and everything, but just making sure you have time for yourself, make sure you're exercising and still doing the things that you love to do outside of work, because I think that's an important thing to remember. Like you're, you're, you have your whole life for your career, but you also need to make sure that you're mentally good for it all. Thank you. And Dr. Shunde, what are you thinking about skills and what kind of skills you utilize? Yeah, I'd say uh, some of the skills that are extremely important now are organization. And it's certainly not something that I had when I was in high school. I think it's something that one learns over time, but it's extremely important. And that's what has made my work a lot easier, especially right now. Um, but perseverance is extremely important. Um, I think uh, realizing at some point that even though something is hard and it's challenging, it's not insurmountable. It's something that, that I and others can overcome. So having grit and learning to work through issues and problems and getting to the other side, I think has really made a difference for me um, all along. And then um, also interpersonal skills. So having good communication skills and working on that and being engaged with uh, people around and activities because the more involved and engaged we are with uh, everyone around us and with our, our general environment, then the more interesting life is. And it makes our work more interesting and more rewarding. And as Ginny said, I think it's really important to find balance. And I have to say that early in my career, particularly during residency and soon thereafter, I didn't feel like there was balance. And I hit a point where I realized I had to find balance and seek balance out by exercising and meditation and by maintaining relationships with, uh, with loved ones. So all those things I think have, have been helpful. Thank you. I think that's great about perseverance. I think that's good for everyone to hear. I mean, we all know that there's challenges in life and I think this last year has been a huge example of that. And that kind of leads me into my next question is that the healthcare industry has had quite a crazy year due to COVID-19. And how do you guys personally see this field evolving over the next few years due to the in impact of the pandemic? Um, Jenny, can you start us off on that one? Yeah, of course. Um, in terms of the pandemic, I think I work in a hospital that's actually really, um, it's a teaching hospital with a bunch of different research going on. Um, and so there's always new, um, research that's going on that you implement in your practice in day to day. So I think just in terms of how it's gonna change with the pandemic, I think masks are probably gonna be more of a normal day to day basis. But I think just making sure people are aware of like what gets people sick and like 
proper hygiene, like hand hygiene is a very important thing that people really need to maintain. So just practicing all those good things. What about you, Sam? How do you feel like that differs for um, being a therapist and what that will look like over the next few years for your career? Yeah, well, one of the biggest changes for us has been working online in, in the past. Very few therapists worked online or by phone. There was a small percentage that most therapists had of that type of practice, but it was by and large in person. And I think we've all been surprised at how effective therapy can be online. Um, particularly as, as may, maybe many of the students on this call knows, like life is happening online more. And, um, and yeah, and so it's been very interesting to learn how to really create an engaged and transformative therapeutic container through Zoom or through one of these online mediums. That's been been very interesting. Um, I, th I think the other way that it really the the pandemic really has stressed the the health system, and that includes the mental health system. It's been like um, most 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 therapists that I know, and myself included, were 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 overbooked. Um, we have, there are many more clients looking for services than we're able to provide. And that's, that's distressing. It's distressing to be in a time when, when there's so much need and, um, and we can all like, <laughs> in order for me to do good work, I need to also make sure that I'm doing well myself. And so it's that finding that balance is very essential. Thank you. And Dr. Shende, I mean, you're you're kind of in the throes of it working with the vaccine. So what is your take on that one? Well, I'm really glad that Ginny brought up the fact that we're going to have to keep wearing masks. And we talk about this all the time, even when we're fully vaccinated, even when we get to what's called herd immunity, um, which is roughly 75 to 80 percent of people fully vaccinated. It's going to be important to maintain all those mitigation measures, meaning wearing a mask, washing hands, staying away from people. Um, at the same time, I've, I've continued to practice pediatrics, and uh, I agree with Sam that uh, doing more remote work is, is going to be the, the way of the future, doing video visits, doing phone visits, because people have realized that it is convenient. It uh, removes some of the obstacles of just having to get to a place at a certain time. Um, so medicine is going to evolve in that way. That doesn't mean that people don't still need to see one another one-on-one. -on -one. We have to. We have to still examine patients. And we still have to give vaccines, which can only be done in person. Um, and, and in addition, I think that uh, this whole pandemic has really brought out a lot of inequities, inequalities in society and a lot of trauma that people have gone through. So I think that there's going to be a lot more emphasis on the mental health aspect and it's going to be incorporated into, into what we do. Um, so many changes that I think are, are going to come about and we're just going to have to see how that all plays out. Um, and uh, in terms of vaccines, yes, vaccines are completely different now than they were before. It makes the primary pediatric vaccines that much more important. And I think that the COVID vaccine is gonna be part of that whole effort. It's gonna become a regular vaccine that everybody's gonna to need to do. So many changes to come. Thank you. All right, to wrap up with our moderated questions before we get to the student questions, thinking back on your guys' own experience in high school, um, what is one piece of advice you would give these students today who are interested in the health career, um, healthcare pathway? Um, and I'll start with Sam this time. Sure. Um, yeah, in a way, I, I, I wish I had considered a healthcare career sooner um, when I was in high school and um, started working in that direction. Um, I think I... Think I like it took me a while to really believe that I could have a sustainable career in the health, in the health world, and um, and so I, I followed a kind of engineering career because I thought that would oh that would be more lucrative and a better better career option for me. And in the end, I really found that no, I like doing something that's meaningful on the day to day basis is really the value that I want to focus on. And so that that would be a big piece, and I I think just letting all of those folks know that there really are many meaningful, sustainable, wonderful careers in the healthcare industry to consider as, as you make your 
decisions, but but also the importance of um, really developing your study skills and learning how to focus and learning how to really learn is such an important part of then being able to be of service when you get into this field. Dr. Shende, do you wanna go next? One piece of advice for these high schoolers today? Sure, um, I think it relates to something I said earlier, it's perseverance. Um, re re just realize that there's always a way forward, no matter what, whether it's something that seems challenging and it's a class that's really hard to, to tackle um, or it's, if there's some other personal issue that's, that's in your way, there's always, always light at the end of the tunnel. There's always a way around it. Um, so really pushing through those issues is, is uh, extremely important. Um, and also just keep in mind that education is your ticket to do whatever you want to do and really mean that. Um, so my brother, for example, uh, uh, there was encouragement that he go into a completely different field, but he loved music. And so he went into music and pursued it in an educational as well as artistic way. And now he is a professor of music and gets to compose and is able to follow his passion and do exactly what he wants. Um, I do too, but I bring that up because many people might be torn between their hobbies and their work and there are ways to combine that. So keeping that in mind, sometimes we have to be creative and flexible about it, but, but it's important. Um, and, uh, and keeping in mind that education and moving on doing college or, or uh, extra training is, is really your ticket forward to be able to do whatever you want in life, whether that's hobbies or travel or whatever. So uh, uh, keeping it up. Uh, even though it might be hard some ways, sometimes along the way. Oh, and one other thing, I think uh, getting volunteer experience. Um, so, you know, if there's something you're interested in, then, you know, getting some uh, volunteering experience and, and learning more about it is extremely important. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> um, and Ginny? Um, for me, I actually, my plan during high school wasn't immediately to go to the junior college, but sometimes things don't go your way and that what ends up happening, but just recognizing like they're similar to what Dr. Sindhu was saying, there's always light at the end of the tunnel, no matter what you decide to do. And I was really happy with my decision to go to the junior college because I was able to save a lot of money. And in doing that, like I, I knew I wanted to pursue um, Spanish and I knew I wanted to study abroad. And that's something that's difficult to do when you're in nursing school and in any other like higher education. So it, I was able to do that at the junior college, but just recognizing, even though that's not necessarily your first choice, there's so many ways to go about doing your education. And there's not like a single answer of, this is the way you need to do this to get this job. There's so many different ways to go about it. And I think that's a really important thing to recognize because you know, like if you don't really know where you, what you want to do yet or necessarily what you want to study, having that option where you save a lot of money and go to the junior college is a great way to do it. Thank you I guys. Just to, I just oh, like go for it. follow on that. I, I also went to Santa Rosa Junior College for two years after finishing at Healdsburg High School. And um, I it was such a valuable experience for me. So I think we have a tremendous resource in our local junior college and I highly recommend it as a place to find find your path so well worth it yes we love our Santa Rosa junior college we have you know awesome opportunities there um, so yeah so thank you guys for those thoughtful responses um, we'll bring back in Nicole now to bring forward some of the student questions I've seen popping up um, that we've received throughout the discussion so Nicole let's bring you back in Hello, thank you. All right, so we have actually a lot of questions. I'm not sure that I'll be get be able to get through them all, but um, I'm gonna start with this one that is for all panelists. Um, what is the biggest struggle about being a health professional? And um, Ginny, why don't you go ahead and get us started on that one? Um, for me, I think it can be pretty hard with my patient population because I do deal with a lot of death and dying on my unit, but um, just recognizing you have your um, your coworkers to re rely on and just making sure you have like work-life balance and making sure like recognizing like, oh, I am here to help this person during a really important part of their life. And even though it may end up where they end up passing away, knowing that I'm able to provide any sort of comfort or help is gives me a lot of peace of mind. Thank you. Um... Samuel, do you mind going ahead next to answer that question? I can restate it if you like. 
Sure. Um, yeah, I, I think the most difficult thing in my field, I think similar to what Ginny said, it's just knowing that I can only do what I can do. And <laughs> that the, the person who I'm sitting with, their, their struggles are their struggles. They aren't my struggles. And, and so learning how to be with, be with someone who's suffering a lot without taking it on myself is a really important way that I'm actually able to be more helpful to them. But it requires a certain self-understanding and, and finding a way of being. But I think it's a really important human skill for us all to learn. Absolutely, self-care. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Um, Dr. Shende. Um, yeah, I would agree that uh, uh, being able to realize your limitations is extremely important. Um, and at the same time, just do your best and, uh, and be there and continue to support those, that person, the, the patient, the family uh, through what they're doing. Sometimes it's, it, it's not the quick fix. It's something that takes time and has to be worked on um, as, as one goes along. Um, but then in addition, I think in healthcare in general, the volume of work that needs to be done um, can be uh, overwhelming. Um, so finding ways to balance that out, uh, finding ways to do it efficiently is extremely important. Um, and, uh, you know, not, not having enough time is, is one of the big challenges, not having enough time as one would want to spend with the patient um, to address their, all their problems. Um, so that leads to developing relationships. And I think that's the most rewarding part of, of our field as well, just developing those relationships with people and uh, for them to understand that even though everything can't be solved at that time, there's always going to be time later on to continue that, uh, that work. Great. Thank you. Um, so true. So, um, Jenny, this question is for you. Um, what classes or major program majors for the program at the junior college did you take to prepare to transfer as a, for the SN? I, I think I answered um, one of this, but I can ex <laughs> verbally explain this as well. Um, there's, I think it depends on what kind of school you want to transfer to, or if you want to do the junior college program. But the main three classes you have to take as a nursing student is anatomy, physio, and microbiology. And before you can take those, you have a lot of prerequisites. So making sure you have your bio prerequisites, your chemistry prerequisites, and also like other requirements include like psych psychology and statistics, making sure you have, um, your basics down and English 1A and all those kind of things to make sure you can take the upper classes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. So let's see. Um, so Dr. Shandy, this one's for you, I think. It says, what, um, what was the part you liked most in your residency schooling career leading up to being a medical professional? And what are the pros and cons of being a pediatrician. I actually combined two questions for that one for you. Okay, how much time do we have? <laughs> That's a big question. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what did I like most? Wow, uh, it was a while ago. Residency was very intense. And um, I think what I enjoyed most about it was again, all the learning that went along with it. It was exhausting, it was gratifying. Um, the, the interactions with people and realizing how, how much you can impact somebody's life and, and how directly you can interact with somebody um, was, was very rewarding. And the constant uh, learning that went along with it um, was very stimulating. The pros and cons of being a pediatrician, I think that was part two of the question. The pros are, it's just fun. I feel like I get to play most of the day um, when I am working clinically. Um, it is uh, rewarding, it's especially rewarding to watch children grow up and to help them, especially through their teenage years, um, when, especially when, when I've had a relationship with them for most of their life. Um, the cons, well, nobody likes getting shots, but at the same time, we know that is how we overcome diseases. So it's extremely important. Um, so I don't know if, any, if, if anyone has seen me doing interviews, you know, in general, in this country, they talk about shots in arms. I never talk about shots in arms because I know that's something that <laughs> nobody wants to think about. The, the, the owie aspect of it is, is awful. Um, but the other part of, of being a pediatrician that's hard is, is working with uh, patients who do have very difficult diagnoses. And again, it comes back down to having that relationship and really trying to work, work through it with them. 
Um, thankfully, in general, in pediatrics, the outcomes are very good. It's a very positive, very hopeful uh, field where uh, many times children do, do improve. And that's, that's very gratifying. But being able to be there for people um, when things are, are tough is, is very rewarding. And for me as a pediatrician, um, being able to vaccinate people out of this pandemic is just a pediatrician's dream. So I, I'm, I'm, I feel very honored to be able to uh, participate in this role. Thank you. Okay, so I am having a hard time seeing if you've answered some of these questions that I had already wrote down. So um, Jenny, this one was for you and you may have already started to answer it. Um, this attendee says, I know I want to be a nurse, but I'm currently struggling on deciding between a laborer and delivery nurse and an ER nurse. Will nursing school help me decide on what form of nursing I want to focus on? I have an answer to that one, so that's great. Um, um, definitely, you'll be able to go through different units while in nursing school. You have different, every, each semester, you either have like med surge unit or a pediatrics maternity and you kind of go through the rotations within each so you, by the end of it I feel like a lot of people do end up finding um, units that they prefer one or the over the other and then usually at the end of their um, nursing school they have this um, semester called preceptorship where you can decide with your school like with your nursing program like the specialty that you're kind of interested in and I think that kind of depends on you have to like apply to get a special like a specific specialty but yeah you'll definitely experience going into labor and labor and delivery and the emergency room and ICU and everything kind of like all over the hospital so if you don't know what you're doing nursing school is a great way to go about it and figuring out and even if you don't know after nursing school, that's totally fine too. I have a lot of friends that don't really know what they wanna do and that's totally fine. I love that. Yes, go try it on and see how you feel. I love that. Well, I think I'm not allowed to ask any more questions because we are running out of time, but thank you all. And I'm gonna let Rachel take back over. Yes, thank you students for all the thoughtful questions. I wish we had more time to get through them all, but we are already going over. Um, so I maybe if the panelists have a few more seconds to try and answer a few more, um, but that's all we can get to live. So I just wanna say if we were here in person, I'd ask you all of our hundred or so uh, participants to give a warm round of applause to our panelists, but instead I'll just give them a big shout out and thank them so much for taking the time to be here today for this discussion. Um, we totally appreciate your contribution to the very first Sonoma County Career Fest and hope you can maybe join us for whatever we end up doing next year. Um, and before we wrap up, as a reminder to students, if you need to get attendance credit from your teacher or school for attending the session today, please complete the form that Nicole puts in the chat. Um, please only fill it out for this healthcare panel. You'll be able to fill it out when you attend other ones, but for right now, you need to fill it out for the healthcare one. These forms are going to be time stamped and will be cross referenced with the Zoom attendance record to share with your teachers so you guys can all get credit for being here today if you need that. Um, and lastly, if you're continuing your day with us at Career Fest, the next event will be the 2 p.m. workshop, Designing Your Future, Moving from Plans to, to a Reality, featuring Jill Mead from Career Services at the wonderful Santa Rosa Junior College that we were just talking about. And you can still register on the website um, that Nicole adds in the chat as well. So we hope to see you all there and have a great day. Thank you so much for being with us today. <laughs>